Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you're new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are going to look at persisting state in Svelte without a database. Now, this came up as a result of another project I'm working on. I have a client who has a rather large application with a lot of state. And the way that the project is designed is a user will go in and make a whole bunch of changes to a project, adding in different pieces. And only when they click a save button is the information uploaded to an API. So they needed a way to uh, retain that information if a user were to navigate and come back. So that's what we're going to do today, except we're going to do it using Svelte. So this application here, I have just a little welcome and account. And when I click the button, the number goes up. Seems pretty straightforward, right? So inside of our source, what we have is we have a stores.js. Uh, this is a writable. It's a writable piece of state. Inside of uh, the layout, uh, we just have some styles, nothing, no logic or anything going on in there. Inside of the page.svelte, here's where the actual content lives. And all I've done here is uh, I've removed the function from being inline and I've pulled it out to its own location here. So what do we need to do? What are our options if we need to store some information and we need to store it quickly and we need to be able to access that to populate our state management software that's running in our front end and we don't have access to a database, how can we make that happen? Well, one thing that we can do is we could use session storage or local storage. In order to do that, it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to have a service worker in order to do that. Um, one caveat is that you do have to have JavaScript enabled. If a user does not, uh, this will not work. So what modifications do we need to make here? And that's what we're going to do now. Inside of this function, what we need to do is every time that this updates, we need to store that information that's being updated in our store we need to store that information. We need to store the store information in another location. And for our purposes, what we're going to do is we're going to say const old count is assigned local storage. Let's use local storage. There are some differences between session and local storage, but for the, for the most part, they work similarly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get this if it exists. So looking for that count variable and passing it. All right, so we want to get that. And then what we want to do is say, if the old count is not equal to the current value of the store, then what we want to do is we want to set that item local storage dot set item and we can put this in there to make sure we don't get any errors this is not available local storage and session storage are not available during server-side rendering keep that in mind and we'll come back to that when we work on the next portion of this so dollar sign count give that a save. Now every time that we click to update our state, we're also going to update the local storage key count with the updated value if it's not equal to what the old value was. So let's refresh this and you'll see that the state is gone, right? That state no longer exists. SvelteKit has refreshed it and so we're back at zero. So inside of inspect, go to application, 
And then on the left hand side, there's different groups. We want to scroll to the storage location. And then depending on which one you choose to use, either session or local, uh, go inside of there. And now when we click the update button, you'll see that we're adding uh, a key of count with a value of one. And if I update, every time I update the state, it also updates the storage. Great, right? So if I hit refresh, oh no, now I've lost it. So now I've got to do the second part, which is initializing that piece of state every time the component first runs. There's a few different ways to do this, but I always try to stick to what is the most simple. So inside of our script, we're just gonna put logic that runs uh, as soon as this script is ran. So whenever we get to this point, it's gonna automatically run this. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do that check. So we need to make sure that type of window is not equal to undefined. And we also need to make sure that the type of if you're using local storage, it would be local storage. If you're using session storage, uh, then use session storage there. But we want to make sure that those are not equal to undefined, like that. And if they are not equal to undefined, then we can do the rest of our logic. So if uh, we need to check first to make sure that uh, the state has not already been initialized, in this case, that would be if the count is equal to zero. Uh, inside of stores.js, our writable is being initialized by Svelte uh, as being zero. So if it's zero, that means that, in, for this purpose, it means that the state has not been initialized. You would need to update your logic for whatever makes sense for your application, of course. But here it means that state has been initialized by Svelte, which means we need to update it if there's a value in our local storage. So what we want to do here is say const count uh, let's call this old count again, old count equal to local storage. And we're going to add that question mark just to make sure get item. And what we're getting is that key that we stored uh, called count and then dollar sign count. And then here again, if there's something there, because there's times where we're going to be doing this where there's not going to be a value passed in by this git, uh, then we want then we don't want to be doing anything. So if there is a value there, then we want to do count dot set. And all of the local storage stuff is stored by default as a string. So we need to parse an integer out of there because in this case it's an int. If you are using a JSON inside of your setter, you would have JSON dot stringify set item. And if you're doing, uh, I'm sorry, and then when you pull that value out, you would parse the JSON back out. So you would do JSON.parse and then the item that you're pulling back out. Uh, that way you can convert to and from JSON that way. For our purposes, it automatically stores uh, integer as a string in storage. And then when we pull it back out, we just have to parse the integer back out. So parsing, uh, parse int old count like that. And if I give this a save, you can see that count is already equal to six. And if I refresh, you'll see that for a very split second, uh, when the uh, server side rendered page first gets here, it's at zero. And then as soon as uh, local storage is available, it looks and grabs that value and then updates, uh, initializes that piece of state with that old value. So this, is, this can be helpful. I'm using this in another project. Like I said, uh, we had limited options for how to fix this problem. And uh, in order to fix it in this situation, we decided to use this solution. Now, obviously this creates a whole bunch of other things that you would need to take care of. Times when you'll need to do a check, making sure that this is cleared out when you don't want it. So you'll have to be very specific uh, as far as what your use cases are and uh, be careful not to accidentally pull information in when you don't want it there. I just thought this would be helpful. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful or interesting. If you did, please give a thumbs up, comment below with your thoughts, and as always, have a great day.